Hello, everybody. Welcome to our new bi-weekly subspace developer sync. Um, we are changing the format of this meeting a bit. So just to kind of give some background on that, um, I'm going to go over kind of what the goals of this meeting are and then uh, what's changed um, from what it was previously. So the, the real goal of this meeting is to provide project highlights for both the team and the community. Uh, also to provide team-wide communication. Um, it's also the only meeting where all of the engineers are together, but just the engineers, so uh, not just our all hands. So, you know, interactions, any questions anybody has for anybody else that uh, could benefit to uh, kind of everybody being involved. Uh, talking about weekends is open on this meeting. That's fine too. So just, you know, kind of general interactions. We are a team, so it's good to get together every once in a while. Um, and then finally for Q and A. So if you have any questions that, um, you know, this is a good good time to ask that as everybody is here. So what's changed? Um, the meeting is now bi-weekly. So this is in an effort just to free up time for everybody rather than having meetings just to have meetings and giving updates just to give updates, um, you know, really being more strategic about how we go approach, uh, how we approach using people's time. Um, so not, so that's the other big change in this. It's not going to be updates from every engineer as to what they've been working on and what they're going to be working on. Those updates are still available um, and will happen in the individual team sync meetings. So the domain sync, uh, which we just had, that'll be posted um, at some, some point here in the next couple of days. Um, the core protocol sync and the app sync. So uh, if you're interested in what everybody is working on individually, um, we go into more detail in that meeting. So it just felt like it was repetitive to be doing that uh, in two meetings. Um, for the developers or, or for the engineers, I still expect uh, the dev sync updates to be filled out um, out of that. So before every meeting out of that, I'll be going through and probably selecting two or three uh, of you to give updates on what you have been working on as we as kind of project highlights when we're reaching certain interesting milestones and such. Um, so, and then also, uh, if you could add agenda items, uh, I don't think I saw anything added for today, but feel free if you have anything you want to discuss uh, to add it ahead of time uh, so anybody can prepare um, answers or such. All right. Um, the other sync meetings are also changing uh, just a bit. They're going to be much more focused on a two week development cycle. So um, I always try to avoid use the word sprint, but kind of a sprint. Uh, sprint brings a lot of um, kind of baggage with it, I think, and a lot of ceremony. Uh, so I, I'll keep saying development cycle. Um, but the idea is that uh, every, all of the teams are going to be working on two, two week development cycle where you're committing to getting some uh, chunk of work done over the next two weeks. And the meeting is going to be facilitating kind of a, did I get that done? If not, you know, what's going on and what I'm committing to in the, the next couple of weeks. All of these changes are experimental, um, subject to change, uh, and feedback is encouraged. I, I really hope to keep all of our uh, meetings and, and work cycles and such as a, a very iterative uh, process. So, All right. With that. We'll go ahead and move to the project highlights for the week. So, uh, Nazar, would you mind uh, bringing us up to date on Gemini 3D? Sure. So, we've been testing Gemini 3D with the team and also some of the community members who are joining voluntarily uh, without really like announcing it. And we have noticed a few problems, uh, primarily on the DSN side. Basically, our DS uh, DSN networks of Gemini 3C and 3D converged. And there was no like network level barrier for them to um, fork away. And we were starting getting a lot of load uh, on the bootstrap nodes, which was supposedly fixed a new network, but due to the networks being compatible, uh, it, it wasn't actually solved. So what we had to do, we had to uh, create a me mechanism for explicit partitioning. And that was deployed a few days ago. Uh, since then I was trying to farm uh, with a new farmer on my machine and first it didn't really work because we didn't have some of the history on the network and our farmer was designed in a way where you, if you cannot reconstruct the sector of uh, particular pieces missing you would, would just um it will just not be able to continue it will exit 
Um, but as more nodes upgraded and joined the network, I was finally able to plot one sector, second sector. And the last time I restarted a farmer was many hours ago. It still works. It still plots. Um, there are a few problems which are uh, resolved by the upcoming pull request. So I think we are in a pretty good shape. It should generally work for people. And how well it performs, we will see at scale. When we have thousands of people, we will see if we see the same kind of problem with unresponsive ports and stuff like that. Uh, but generally, it looks promising. I think it should be a decent improvement over Gemini 3C. Great. Um, I have a, I, I had to wipe and start over, and uh, so I'm still syncing. So I don't know uh, where it's at yet. But I will note that syncing is much faster than 3C. Um, so it's, at least for me, it has been uh, about twice as fast as what I was seeing on 3C. So, um, I've done some work. Yes. Uh, all right, this is our uh, second updates also from you. Uh, you stated that all fundamental components of consensus v2.3 yeah. are implemented. Yeah. That was a little bit older. Uh, actually, not only components, I am able to farm blocks locally mm -hmm. uh, with the new consensus. Um, there are a few caveats there. Uh, performance is not great. Uh, basically, it's not possible right now with the de defined parameters in from specification to actually prove uh, whatever you want to prove during block production within one second. So I had to increase the time slot to three seconds and decrease drastically number of pieces. But at least I can verify the whole workflow works and verification works and everything is good. So from there, um, I need just need to fix tests uh, because tests were not fixed yet. Uh, it's primarily in the palette subspace and in the light client that uh, Ved was working on. And after that, it should theoretically be mergeable, but I think we'll need to play with parameters to define them in a way that is usable. And from there, we will have to do some performance optimizations and see uh, if we can get the characteristics we want, or we need to redefine some of the parameters. So maybe look at it more fundamentally, I don't know. But I think there is still potential for improvements. I'm not sure there is so much improvement that we can get one second on commodity hardware, but we'll see. Do you have ideas kind of already laid out for performance improvements or? Yeah, for Chia proof of space uh, table derivation, we can probably cut like half of the time. Uh, we are just doing a lot of extra stuff we don't need. Um, then there are some performance on the KZG side, I think, and it's not very idiomatically written. And when that is the case, it's not as well optimized. I have seen that even with our code when I was Rearchitect improving to use like iterators more idiomatically, it got faster, much faster actually. So probably there is some potential there, um, and also need to do more profiling on the of individual components to see if we can optimize some things. Um, it's still kind of open question how much potential is there, uh, but I think at least two x should be possible. And right now on my kind of overpowered machine, it takes. Uh, 1.3 seconds, about 1.3 seconds to actually prove. So if you cut it in half, at least on my machine, I can prove it within one second. But then if you have a few solutions, then you need more time. We'll have to play with parameters and see. What did you refer to your machine as? Kind of overpowered or? Kind of overpowered, yeah. <laughs> like if you go to telemetry, we can see that most of the users have four to eight cores available to them. Mm -hmm. And they have six plus gigabytes of RAM. And my machine has like 32 threads. So it's quite a bit more. Uh, it's great that it scales to that many cores, but we need to target something like six cores um, for our users, at least right now. Cool. Well, it's great to uh, see so much progress. Um, looking forward to seeing where it goes next. So performance wise, uh, cool. Uh, OK, the other update I wanted for this week was uh, Parth. I know you've got um a demo you're going to be posting here shortly on the domains channel but maybe you can kind of go over what what you've accomplished with the e3 light domain yes so last week was uh, specifically preparation for the demo um i had to run uh, ethereum consensus and execution more locally uh, just to get the data faster and without timeouts, uh, I was able to generate uh, data. And uh, I, I 
uh, change the snow for three layer to work with uh, our core three layer domain and this was just for de demo purposes uh, there were some changes around um, since since the domain blocks are not getting finalized there were some changes uh, around that plus uh, uh, the go Go code does not really support uh, the entirety of uh, how the runtime call is encoded, specifically some complex uh, encoding. So I had to write it by hand. But after everything, I was able to uh, create the demo. In the demo, uh, specific uh, what is happening is we are fetching the data from Ethereum testnet. Uh, Snow uh, Snowberry's reader is fetching the data from Ethereum testnet using the uh, node that uh, Ethereum node that we have locally, and um, it is now putting the data out to uh, the Ethereum uh, light client. And we are also uh, we have also uh, the custom feed processor that is um, creating the custom uh, feed, and uh, we are submitting objects to it. Um, yeah, so I, I have opened a PR uh, from that. So that that is uh, primarily my uh, progress uh, for the last period. Great. All right. Well, that was all I had uh, for highlights, unless anybody wants to jump in with something they've been working on interesting as an update. No volunteers. All right, well, we can move. That's Stefano, yes. Yeah, I want to just give a quick heads up that we are working on the dev SDK. So we will, in a way, replace the original subspace.js with a more comprehensive experience for builders. This is very early in the process. We will involve um, the community team uh, in the next uh, iteration, but I think it's an interesting news to share with the rest of the community that the dev SDK is coming. Great, thank you, Stefano. All right, my uh, my only other agenda item was to talk about AI for a few minutes. So um, we did, you know, it, it, as everybody knows, we have this, uh, what I'm referring to as subspace AI initiative in which we were all um, working towards, you know, figuring out the ways we can use AI to improve our own workflows and improve the company's workflows. So uh, to be clear, not to integrate AI into the chain, but more how uh, as a software team, we can use AI to improve our efficiency and productivity, innovation uh, and such. So um, just a reminder that everybody is expected to be doing this research um, and keeping kind of a journal of that. So please go to the Subspace AI Initiative page, uh, click the button that will create your own notes page and start sharing what you guys are doing so it's been really fun uh going through those actually so i've learned a ton been uh clicking through a lot of stuff i've got a lot more to look at over the next few days um but i did want to give there was a couple of a uh, couple of things i thought were pretty interesting people did so i'm going to give them a a couple people a couple minutes to go over um, what they've done so ozgin uh you want to talk about your release notes generator Sure. So this is doing a pretty simple and boring task. Um, this was a repetitive task for me because I was um, looking at the closed PRs, sorry, merged PRs and closed issues after a release to get an idea of what has been changed. And um, it was taking maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes of mine for every release. So I decided to like, why not utilize AI for this repetitive test? And I asked the code uh, to be generated from ChatGPT. Uh, it did a pretty bad job, considering I asked for a Python code. Um, I had to debug it for 20 minutes, but in the end, it was productive since after 20 minutes, it was working and it was generating me the template notes of issues that have been closed and the apps that have been merged after uh, the release that I provided to the program, which is being supplied by a URL. And now that I have a tool that can save me like maybe 20 or 30 minutes, because I still need to do some uh, human supervision on top of using this. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, not every node from the PRs 
or issues uh, needs to be going to the uh, release notes. So still it's up to me to decide which uh, update or change was relevant for us to put into release notes. But um, at least I don't have to go through every individual PR or issue from now on. If you had decided to just go ahead and write this script, how long do you think it would have taken you without the assistance of AI? Depends. Uh, I was thinking about using the requests library from Python because I used it uh, back then. And I was thinking of scraping the URL and uh, like parsing the whole thing. But it seemed, turned out that GitHub has an API for these queries. Uh, if I spent like maybe 30 minutes or one hour before I realized that there's an API for that, uh, one hour ago going to the waste. So, and if you consider debugging and other stuff, the worst case probably is three to two to three hours. The best case will be one hour, I guess. And then an ongoing dividend, obviously, uh, every time you do a release. So. Um, Surge, Repo Ranger. I love the name. Did AI yeah, generate the uh, name? Of course. I, okay. I wouldn't make up such a name. Yeah, so after generating uh, docs based on GraphQL schema, which was a relatively easy task, I decided to build something more interesting. And uh, yeah, build, uh, there is a, actually a repository. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, it's called GPT uh, Repository Loader. And it's a common line tool. Uh, built with Python, and I tried it, um, and it was all right. But I felt like um, the whole repository is, uh, yeah, so main idea, it converts code repos into prompt-friendly format. So basically, all the files in the repository, it converts them to one chunk that you can uh, submit as a prompt to ChatGPT. And if you take all files from the repository, it's usually like, a huge chunk which should be splitted. So I decided maybe we can build a UI application that can uh, allow selecting particular files because if you work on a feature, you don't need the whole repository usually, right? You just need uh, a bunch of modules. So let's try everybody's favorite. And by the way, all these styles were implemented by ChatGPT, which was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't have to write any uh, CSS class manually. So we can select a branch, filter different files uh, by type or uh, search. Let's say, uh, for example, you know, this crate is small, so we can try it. Um, pilot object storage. And yeah, it collects all the contents into one uh, chunk we can copy it and go to our favorite uh, website. We, of course, use ChatGPT. And we can ask uh, something like, pass the code, follow trust naming conventions. And paste. OK. So <laughs> sometimes you have to refresh uh, the code. And then you can use this, uh, like, uh, create this code uh, to, to do prompts, whatever you like. And uh, yeah, obviously, this code follows conventions. And uh, but we can try something more sophisticated, like uh, implement. Uh, put many call and it will suggest uh, the actual code. So I tried uh, this tool to actually improve the code base of this application and it felt pretty uh, productive. It's like uh, programming is fun again. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the progress for today. So would a next step be like interacting with the OpenAI API and have it like all, so you never have to actually leave Repo Ranger to ask questions about the repo and? Uh, not sure. Mm, 
it could be one way of improvement yeah yeah so happy to chat about this offline okay. if you have any ideas cool um and by the way this, this applies for this um and for anybody else i do have a subspace labs open api open ai api uh account so um ping me if you'd like to be added as a member um, and i can go ahead and do that and you can generate keys and such all right um that was it uh any anybody have any final questions or thoughts before we sign off all right well thank you uh for all the input um all the uh updates we will see everyone in two weeks thanks